What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's my final team selection of the season, of course, for game week 38. And in a minute, I'm going to take you through how the team is looking, thoughts on transfers, captaincy, final day differentials, and how I did in game week 37. Before we get into that, I just wanted to say thanks. There will be more videos this week. We'll probably have uh, final thoughts either tonight or tomorrow. Deadline stream on Sunday, end of season stream on Sunday as well. But this is likely to be the most viewed video this week. So I wanted to use it as an opportunity to say thanks for supporting me throughout this season. I know it's incredibly cliche for any YouTuber to say this, but obviously I wouldn't be able to do this if you weren't watching, liking, subscribing, commenting all throughout the season. I really do appreciate it. I think sometimes with FPL content, it can get like, intense probably isn't the right word, but you almost like fall into a routine, especially like over Christmas when there's deadlines every three to four days, you just make the videos next deadline make the videos next deadline and I almost forget what a ridiculous job I have and sometimes when you get to certain stages of the season like the end you kind of sit back and appreciate that what you're doing is like an incredibly privileged position to be in and obviously I've been doing it now for like six to seven years I've been doing it full-time solo for two seasons now this is the end of my second season only doing let's talk FPL stuff and lots of you have supported me not just this season but over many years so thank you very much I won't keep going because this video will probably be long enough anyway but I appreciate the support like I said this isn't the final video it's probably just mostly uh, going to be probably more likely to be the most viewed one so you know what I'm going to say at the end if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and let's jump into it. So game week 37, a supposed double game week, but let's be honest, it was a little bit rubbish. I finished on 75 points, which I'd be happy with if this was a single game week, but of course it was a double, so it does feel disappointing. But if we take the positives from it, it was enough for a green arrow. So I went from 42k to 36k inside the top 40,000. This is my highest rank so far this season. And going into the final game week that does feel like a nice position to be in for what it's worth as things stand this would be my fourth worst finish in 13 seasons the other kind of top three worst finishes the, the gap is quite big so it's like 90k 104k and 160k so if i finished 36k i would still be very happy with that that's a great finish especially with all the competition there is now but i can't help as an fpl manager being a little bit greedy and wondering if i can make this not my worst uh, fourth worst ever finish and that would mean finishing inside the top 21k and i just think that's probably out of reach at this point my realistic hope after game week 38 would be to finish in the top 25k if i did that i'd be extremely happy i'll be happy with this rank anyway because like i said a top 50k even a top 100k now is getting harder and harder but if i could finish top 25 that would be nice so we'll come on to which transfers i'm looking to make to try and make that happen in a minute in terms of game week 37 itself there weren't actually many of my double game week players that played twice edison didn't start either game so kepper came on to be fair he did start twice he just didn't get many points with three Estrepinian started twice didn't get a clean sheet Shaw did get a clean sheet in the first game and did really well for bonus and he started the second game against Chelsea but he went off at half time so that wasn't ideal McAllister was benched Rashford didn't start either game although he did come on before the 30th minute last night so he got his appearance point and scored and obviously Bruno Fernandes is someone you can always rely on overall the transfer I did was Isaac to Alvarez. I rolled my other move. I think in the end that was the right decision. He got nine points total. I now have two free transfers going into the final day. The only thing to really talk about is... Was Harlan captain the wrong move? Because my vice captain was Bruno Fernandes. That's who I would have put the armband on if I hadn't gone for Harlan. And in the end, it was only like a five-point difference. So it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. I probably did underestimate just how much Pep was going to rotate once the league was over. I knew Harlan would get one star. I did think there was an outside ch uh, chance of two. But maybe I overplayed that a little bit. But still, if you watch that Brighton game... Harlan could have definitely come away with more than just one assist. So it looks like the wrong decision now because Fernandez has played twice. Harlan hasn't. He's outscored him. But I think if I was doing it again, I would probably just go for Harlan. And obviously, um, Arsenal losing to Forest meant that Pep could rotate heavily for that Chelsea game. I'm not sure whether he would have if the league title was still kind of up for grabs obviously they were going to win it anyway at that point but you want it locked in and that was their last home game of the season so Arsenal maybe messed things up a little bit but on the flip side 
Because they lost, a Man City rotated. Alvarez did play as the number nine in the first game, and that's where his goal came from. So I can't be too disappointed. I guess McAllister, again, frustrating to miss one game. We've held on to a lot of these players now for a long time because of the doubles, and there are kind of cracks starting to show rotation and stuff like that. But a lot of it comes down to you know, what is left to play for. And with Man City, unfortunately, the league was over. And so Pep was kind of going to rotate a little bit. But yeah, 75 points on paper for a double doesn't feel great. But it was a green arrow, so I really shouldn't complain. So going into game week 38, I've got two free transfers and one million in the bank. So I am somewhat flexible with the moves that I can make. And I'm open to doing a variety of different things depending on team news, team leaks and stuff like that. Let's start off with the goalkeepers. I've got Edison against Brentford away and Kepper against Newcastle at home. I'm currently playing Edison for a few different reasons. With Chelsea, I've just not been impressed for a long time. They've only got one clean sheet in their last 10 games in the league. We saw how open they were last night against Man United. Frank Lampard is playing a lot of the youngsters to show what they can do ahead of next season. And they're also just playing a very good Newcastle side who technically don't have anything to play for in terms of Champions League places. That's absolutely secure. But they will know if they win that game against Chelsea and Man United lose or draw against Fulham, they would then finish third. And that would cap off what has already been a great season. And of course, it's game week 38. Eddie Howe might want to play some youngsters. He might want to freshen things up, give some players a chance that maybe haven't played that much. But whatever team he puts out has got a good chance of scoring against Chelsea. Whereas with Edison, I don't think a clean sheet is guaranteed by any stretch Brentford are a very good team especially at home but I do think Man City will put out close to their kind of first choice start in 11 because Pep's going to want that match rhythm and match fitness ahead of the FA Cup final and I know Ortega has played the last two games but I think he's also going to play the FA Cup final so if he plays against Brentford Edison who's most likely going to play the Champions League final won't have played since the second leg against Real Madrid and I just don't think that's going to happen so I'm hopefully comes in if we don't get any team news about Edison or Kepa I'm just going to play Edison and hope that if he's benched that Kepa will play instead if we do get team news they're both missing out then I might well make a goal well I will make a goalkeeper transfer but it's not something I really want to do I also don't really want to make a transfer for any of my defenders for a couple of reasons one there often is way more goals on the last day of the season than in any other game week but also there's so few genuine attacking decent options that I don't already own there's just a lack of defender options to bring in so I think with Estupinian for example playing against Villa away it's not a great fixture the season is done for Brighton they've got their Europa League place and Villa are going to be competing to try and get into the Europa Conference League and, and they probably will score but given how attacking Estupinian is I think I've just got to play him and unless we know for sure he's missing out I'm just going to hold on to him for that reason I should say I'm recording this video before most of the press conferences have happened but I have seen some of the stuff that Klopp has said and one of them was he's going to freshen things up for the final day and change some players around which isn't a surprise because top four is now over for them they will be in the Europa League next year I'm hopeful that Trent will play I think some of the changes for Klopp could be like Firmino coming in uh, in that number nine position. I think he mentioned that Robertson and uh, Canate are doubt. So you could see Simakas come in and maybe a Matip or someone like that. I'm hoping Trent will play and he's just too good to kind of worry about. So if we know for sure he's benched, then maybe I maybe I sell him. But if not, I'm definitely keeping him. Southampton are relegated. That could be a huge return uh, or huge points potential for Trent. So he's got to stay. The issue for me is Luke Shaw. He went off last night at halftime. Apparently, it was a back issue. Eric Ten Hag said after the game that it was too early to say they'd need to wait 24 hours. And look, Ten Hag has not rotated much this season. I'm not sure he's going to rotate a huge amount in the final game against Fulham, even though Man United only have Friday and Saturday off before they play again. But Luke Shaw now is a major doubt. And even though he hasn't rotated that much, I don't see any reason to take a risk because that FA Cup final is now huge, right? Man City going for the treble. You don't want that to happen. And also, Ten Hag just wants another trophy. So I'd now be surprised unless Luke Shaw wakes up today and is fully fit, if he will play. So then it comes down to, is it worth using a transfer on him? And I think right now, I would just rather Trippier comes off the bench instead, because he might not get a clean sheet in that game, but we know how attacking he can be. And like I've said, 
I just don't see a huge amount of interesting defenders to bring in. So if I do need to make a goalkeeper swap, it'll probably be for Pickford. I'm not ruling out Johnston, but I think Pickford absolutely guaranteed to play. Everton going to be fighting for their lives. I think he's good for save points as well. With defenders, there's a few different options, but none of them are massively attacking. Ben White played as a centre-back in the last game. He may well do that again. Tierney might not even start. You look at Everton defenders, okay, they can get something from a set piece, but from open play, you're not expecting a huge amount of points from their centre-backs. Castagna maybe again, but do I really want to push my luck with Leicester defenders? I'm on like 6.1 points per game so far this season when I play a Leicester defender or goalkeeper. There's no way that can keep up. And I also think even if West Ham rotate, they'll probably score because the Leicester defence is awful. Part of me for the nostalgia wants to go for Maguire. I do think Varane might get rested for the final day to keep him fresh for the FA Cup final. But if Man United do end up rotating a bit, that would obviously make them worse off. And Fulham might be out for revenge because of the FA Cup final. So Maguire, I, I just picture that bullet header, which is why I always think about him. Like how amazing would that feel to bring him in the week he does that? Obviously, it's very unlikely that happens. I guess if Dallo starts instead of Wan-Bissaka, he can be quite attacking, good for bonus as well. And then you've got the Liverpool players, depending on who plays. Now, Robertson was listed as one of those with a doubt, as a doubt, and Simicast is only 4.3, but the system Liverpool are playing right now, that left-back doesn't get as far forward as they would have done in previous seasons when Simicast would have been amazing for 4.3. So I'm a little bit unsure about where I would go. I think clean sheet potential. Arsenal's probably one of the best hopes this week. But overall, I just... Because there's going to be two attacking transfers I want to make, is it worth a hit to not play Trippier? It's probably not. And if worse comes to the worst and I need another sub, I've got Botman anyway. So I think... Right now, the only way I would make a transfer is if a really interesting, low-owned, attacking defender comes up, like Tierney for Arsenal. I might be tempted by that. Or, if I need the money for another move, I would be tempted to downgrade someone, like a Trippier to a Simicass, and just play them instead. So, that's how the defence looks right now. And that was a long time to basically say I'm probably not going to make any transfers, but that's the reason uh, reasons why. So, let's take a look at the midfield, and we'll talk about the captaincy armband, first of all, because as you can see, it's currently on Salah. The reason for that is, if I want to break into the top 25k, or maybe even the top 20k, I probably need to go different with my transfers, and and or with the captaincy and if I'm not going to go for Haaland before I make any moves and I come on to what they could be in a minute Salah probably is the next best option that's a fixture where neither side has anything to play for but Liverpool great attack are going to be able to just go for it against an already relegated Southampton side that haven't been great defensively now obviously I've already mentioned that Klopp has said he's going to freshen things up didn't really mention any players specifically that might come in Salah I guess is more of a risk than he usually would be but I think he will start. I think it's more likely he would come off a bit earlier than normal, maybe 60 or 70 minutes instead of 80 or 90. But that could still be enough time for him to get the points to make that differential captain worth it. I'm not ruling out Haaland whatsoever because I do think Man City will play a pretty much full strength 11 and we know how many chances he gets and I know people will always talk about how differential you need to go to climb up the ranks but it doesn't always work like that I've got plenty of stories from the final day where yes I've thought about going for a differential and I've turned it down and I've missed out on that milestone, maybe a top 10k or a top 20k, whereas if I'd gone for the differential, I would have made it. But then you look at last season, very close to finishing inside the top 10k, my two moves were to bring in Mane, the differential, or to bring in Son, who was in incredible form, going for the golden boot and playing Norwich. And I took the obvious move, which was Son, and I finish inside the top 10k. And if I'd gone for Mane instead, I would have finished outside. So it's all well and good, all these stories about how, you know, you go differential. That always works out on the final day. That's how to climb up the ranks. It doesn't always work like that, which is why I've not completely ruled out Harlan. Because I think he'll start and probably get plenty of chances. But we'll talk more about captaincy later on. Either way, unless we get T news, Salah is staying. With Man United, they have secured top four. They could secure top three guaranteed with the win. After the game last night, Ten Hag mentioned the home record. They want to win. 
in. They want to get third place. They want match rhythm ahead of the FA Cup final. And he has not rotated that much this season. Obviously, he's not been in a position where he's got a cup final against Man City and the league or the Champions League is already secure. So he might rotate a bit. But I think Fernandes just always plays. So I think he's going to line up again. And I also think there's a pretty good chance that Rashford plays. Now, because Anthony got injured and Rashford probably came on a little bit earlier than intended, I think it's less likely that he plays than it was before the match. Because if he got to, like, 60 minutes and then came on, well, he would have had half an hour and then probably needed a game from the start before the cup final. He doesn't necessarily need that now, but I still think he's going to play, especially if Martial gets rested and Anthony is out, which it looks like he will be. I don't think Ten Hag is going to rotate so much to put that win at risk. So again, unless we get T news, I think they'll both start. Um, and I think I've got to keep them. I think Fulham at home is a great fixture. Final home game of the season for Man United as well. You want to go out with a bang, lots of confidence ahead of the FA Cup final. They're probably just two players I've got to keep. And the issue I've got now is I've only got one million in the bank, which is okay, but if I'm keeping Fernandez and Salah and Trent, they're locking up a lot of money, so it doesn't give me many routes to go with my transfers. Then we come on to McAllister and Matoma. I, I don't think it's a bad thing necessarily to keep Brighton players, but I also think they're sellable, and the reason I'm probably going to sell one of them is because there's a good replacement in Eze as an option in midfield, but also Matoma and McAllister are quite high-owned, so it's not just about the differentials you can bring in, it's about whether or not, you know, you can take the risk to take out a high-owned player, and if it pays off, that could be even more beneficial, because it's not like Matoma is going to suddenly be sold by everyone. I'm sure quite a few people already have, but if, if he was like 80-90% owned in the top 100k last week, he's probably still going to be over 50% going into game week 38. I think right now, I'm probably more likely to take out McAllister, which might seem counterintuitive. Uh, I almost got the words wrong there, because he just got a rest and Matoma hasn't. But there's nothing more for Brighton to rest these players for. I think McAllister maybe is being rested more often because he's being uh, protective, because they're probably going to sell him in the summer. It's not guaranteed, but that is on my mind as well. So I think McAllister being sold to Eze is definitely on my mind. The only thing I've got against that transfer is Eze is a differential, but everyone's going to bring him in this week, so he's going to be even less so. But he is so cheap, it's hard to kind of turn him down. These are the other midfielders that I will probably consider i know it'd be much better to have a more concise list but i am genuinely open to doing anything on that final day in the last 10 minutes of panic before the deadline i think arsenal very low owned i think that's going to be a great game for them i think there's plenty of goals at home against wolves so saka odegaard or trossard could come in i think trossard's got the benefit of being the lowest owned and the least transferred in this week but saka for what he can do He's owned by hardly anyone, and also he's on penalty. He's just signed a new contract if you want another narrative as well. So I'm kind of tempted by him. Ramsey's obviously a cheap option. So is Garnacho. Now, I don't think it's a guarantee that Garnacho starts, but I think there's a good possibility. I think he will line up on the left. I think Rashford will play up front. Bruno Fernandes at the 10, and probably Sancho on the right or something like that. Either way, again, not a guarantee Garnacho plays, but it's tempting. And his numbers are pretty good. He always looks impressive when he plays, and he's only 4.1 million. So if I wanted to bring him in, I could potentially use both of my transfers on Matoma to Garnacho and McAllister to Eze. So to get two somewhat differentials and to take out two fairly high owned players. I know what people are going to say. Hang on a minute. Trent, Salah, Rashford, Fernandes, they're all quite high owned as well. I get that, but I just think what they're capable of, especially with their matches they've got, are just better than Brighton. Remember that Fulham, not a lot to play for. Southampton, nothing to play for. Aston Villa, they want that seventh place. They want to get into Europe. So it's a one game week shootout. Anything can happen. Matoma and McAllister could get 10 points each and the players I could bring in could blank. That's just the risk you kind of take. Just to quickly talk about other possible moves... Not completely ruling out Madison, but I just think I'm probably going to avoid Leicester because I just think they've got something to play for, but game state can massively affect things. Like, if they go 1-0 up, are they going to go for the second goal or are they going to try and protect their league? Because they need to win. So Madison's okay as a big differential on set pieces, should start, but not a guarantee. I think for Man United, Sancho, maybe. He played pretty well last night, but I think he's a bit hit and miss. Liverpool and Son where I'm really interested in. 
the money is just going to be too much for me. So if Diaz or Gakpo start, I like both of them. I do think there'll be plenty of goals for Liverpool against Southampton. And Son has got leads away. And yes, he's 11.5 million. It's way too expensive. I wouldn't want him for the next four to six weeks. But guess what? We've only got one week left. So if Salah was to be benched, I think Son is probably one of the first names I would think about. Lots comes into it then, right? I might need the money for another move, so I might do Salah to Saka, for example, and have lots of money to upgrade another position. But Son does tempt me. He's he's like 0.08% owned in the top 100k. I think if people want a Spurs player, they're going to go for Kane. And again, it's all about how differential I want to push it. So on this list of names... I think Eze is definitely right up there. I'd be very surprised if I don't bring him in. Garnacho if he starts. And if I've got a bit more money to spend, Saka, Diaz and Son are players I'd really like to bring in because they're all super low owned and we know what they're kind of capable of. But I think with Fernandes, Rashford and Salah, I'm probably just going to keep hold of them. And then up front, it's Haaland and Alvarez. And I think with Haaland, he's much more likely to be in my team for game week 38 than not. I know a lot of people are looking at doing Haaland to Kane. It looks like a really good move. I completely get it. But I'm just more likely to shift the captaincy armband somewhere else and just keep hold of him. As it stands... And my mind could easily change before game week 38 deadline. The only way I see myself doing Haaland to Kane is one, if Haaland is not playing, or two, perhaps Salah's not playing, and I want to go for a different captain, in which case I would need to get Kane in, and perhaps then I take out Haaland and Salah, and maybe getting Kane and Son. Who knows what might happen? So that's Haaland. With Alvarez, if my prediction that Man City are going to play a fairly full strength 11 is correct, he would then probably not be in that team. I don't think he's going to start either of the cup finals but De Bruyne did play against Brighton so he might get a rest ahead of the FA Cup so they could play mostly full strength but put Alvarez in that number eight position now from an FPL point of view you'd rather he played as a number nine than number eight but given his ownership levels and the fact he plays for Man City I don't think I could turn it down even if he was playing number eight for the final day I would probably just keep hold of him if I'm going to make a forward transfer this is probably the rough short list of players that I would consider I will narrow it down a little bit if I sell Haaland Kane is the obvious move I don't think it's guaranteed that's the way I would go I probably would but there are other kind of solutions I could go to a slightly cheaper forward like a Firmino and I'll come on to him in a minute which would then give me money to do McAllister to Saka instead of McAllister to Eze now Eze is a great pick this week and his ownership in game week 37 was very low but I would guess let's take a look here that he's been heavily transferred in this week I've not actually checked this where is it transfers in for midfielders, yeah, Eze, 143,000 transfers in. You compare that to Saka, 37k. So both their ownerships are still going to be fairly low in game week 38, but Saka will be even lower owned. And getting someone like Firmino instead of Kane would allow me to do it. So again, it will all come down to the final hour or two before the deadline about how differential I want to push it. But having Saka and Firmino is even more differential than Eze and Kane. So again, how much will I want to push it? We'll have to decide. But I do think there's a good chance that Firmino starts. Nothing riding on this game for Liverpool. It's his final game for the club as well. Of course, you'd rather have your final game at home. But Liverpool were still fighting for Champions League last week. Now they're not. So I think he'll start. And he's 0.0... I think it's 0.04% ownership. Top 100k. I expect he hasn't probably had that many transfers in this week. He's not in the top, whatever this is, six. I mean, Alvarez is at 55k in. That's interesting. He might not even start. Let's have a look at Liverpool. Firmino is 9,935. So against a already relegated side, if he starts and gets 60, 70 minutes, that could be big. And I'm sure they'll be trying to get him to score just to see off his kind of Liverpool career. So I'm kind of tempted by that for the narratives. I'm not completely ruling Watkins out. It feels like a boring transfer, but he's probably going to go and get 90 minutes. Villa need the win to secure that Europa Conference League place. And you can't say that many players this week are going to get 90 minutes, or at least you can't guarantee it. So Watkins might look boring, but it's a good all-round solid move. And he is somewhat of a differential um, already. Again, I've not checked transfers in at all. I probably should have done that before I started recording. But for Villa, he's been transferred in by 40k. So it's not that much. He's still going to be a differential given what he can do. If I need to go on the cheaper end of the scale... Edouard is probably the one because of the fixture. I just think there's goals in that Crystal Palace Forest game, and he's only 5 million. So the most likely players from this list are probably Kane, Firmino, and Edouard. 
But I'm not going to rule out anyone, really. Like, Jesus, if I want an Arsenal player, maybe even if Richarlison starts, I go for a massive punt against Leeds, even though he's got hardly any goals this season. What if Calvert-Lewin was fit against Bournemouth? Maybe. But I think Kane, Firmino, and Edouard are probably my kind of top three. So that's what the team's looking like. I know this has been quite a long video. There's loads of ifs, buts, loads of different players I can bring in, but that's just the kind of week it is. I think as it stands, I probably play Luke Shaw, and if he doesn't, uh, I, th I think he just won't be involved. I think he'll either start or just not be involved at all. Trippier will come on. I just don't think there's too many defender transfers I want to make. And I guess McAllister to Eze, and then maybe even Alvarez to Eduard might be my two moves and just keep hold of Matoma. I'm almost hoping that one of the big expensive names misses out because that then gives you flexibility to make slightly different moves. Obviously, if Haaland misses out, then Alvarez would probably play as the nine. And so Haaland to Kane, McAllister to Eze would be the obvious move. But who knows? I, I Panic's the wrong word, but sometimes I get notions as I get closer to the deadline. Is notions a word that other people use, or is that a very Irish thing? I always hear that in Ireland. Anyway, I'm going off track now. I'm rambling. I might get notions towards the deadline that I want to go a little bit different. So let's see what happens. I will try and record a final thoughts video either tonight or for tomorrow. We will have a deadline stream on Sunday, so make sure you tune in for them. Once again, thank you for joining me all season. This has been the final team selection video. If you've enjoyed them all year or if you've just enjoyed this particular one, make sure to give it a like, hit subscribe, and I will catch you again tomorrow or maybe, yeah, tomorrow or tonight. I don't know. One of the two. See you later.